Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, what's up, what's up? Happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Hey, guys, so I want to check in with you guys real quick. I'm heading to the gym. Uh, give me a quick workout in. Uh, get my mind and my body right. I missed yesterday's workout. Uh, I had a talk, uh, one of two talks in three days, uh, three or four days, and uh, just got home and was decompressing and didn't have time to get my my Tuesday workout in. So now I'm trying to get caught up uh, and back on track with my workouts. Uh, but I want to check in. So, you know, those who know me know, you know, I'm a, I'm an overthinker, right? I overthink stuff. And part of that comes from my personality. Part of that comes from playing uh, sports at a high level, you know, trying to, to be great at different things at a high level and just always trying to improve and get better. So with that, with the BTY mentality, with the better than yesterday uh, mantra and mindset, you know, you, you overthink. So immediately after my talk yesterday, I was taking notes, you know, what went well, what, you know, what could I have improved on? And it was a three and a half hour talk. I spoke with or, or had a workshop with um, a local high school with some of the children, the youth, uh, who are less motivated, less inspired, less driven, less committed to to doing things the right way. So they hired me, brought me in to provide some leadership, provide some perspective, provide some motivation. And so afterwards, I spoke with uh, the faculty, many of the staff, about my approach, um, and 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 it was good. Most of the feedback was good, but yet there's always room for improvement. Uh, and then I got home and I got some feedback from my Friday talk uh, at a local um, correctional facility, and uh, that feedback was helpful. Uh, wasn't all great, wasn't all perfect, but very helpful. So I want to say this. So I, I have been teaching and inspiring and writing and speaking about, about chasing the best version of ourselves for about a decade now or more. My blog, I started when I was still a CFO, uh, writing about you know what was making me successful. And that was in the early 2000s. And so I've been at this for about... 20 years in totality, you know, trying to be better, trying to grow, trying to learn, and then using those lessons to teach others. Uh, by no means am I an expert. By no means do I pretend to know everything about everything. It comes across that way, I know sometimes, but I, I know that I'm, I'm still growing and learning. So when I, when I speak about my thoughts and my perspectives and my, and what I see, uh, in the world about leadership, I'm speaking from the standpoint of my experiences, my study, my acknowledgement, my uh, reasoning about what I'm experiencing as a parent, as a coach, as a teacher, as a speaker. And uh, I gave my first, I taught my first leadership class uh, late last year. You know, shout out to Mike Lovano and, and Leadership Gilroy, I ran a six class course on leadership. And these were all professionals. These were all adult professionals already in positions of leadership, already with businesses, already with careers. And I was giving them my perspective on leadership. None of it from a book, none of it from uh, some certification or accreditation or or seminar I took, it was all from my own curriculum, what I've learned. And so I've taken those same concepts, those same ideas, uh, and brought them wherever I went. So yesterday, when I was teaching uh, the youth at this high school, I was using the same core principles that I use in every leadership thing, position I have, and it's what I teach people to do as leaders. And so as I was sharing some of my thoughts and my ide ideologies, uh, the staff members uh, were intrigued 
and pleased. And so I might do a follow up with the staff uh, at this high school. Uh, but what I want to tell you guys about is I want to tell you kind of what the core ideas I think are important as leaders, right? As parents, as teachers, as administrators, as coaches, as people who are leading youth or leading adults, what I think are the most important tenets to remember. And none of them are things that you might have heard, I don't think. So number one, I think the, the most important thing when you want to be an effective leader is to want to be an effective leader. I know it sounds silly, but in my five steps to, to greatness that I apply to everything I do, the first step is want, desire, uh, a real, real uh, longing to be something. So the first step is you have to really, really want to be great at leadership. And I know we want to have the title and make the money that leaders make and have, but to want to be really effective requires that you continue to learn, that you continue to grow, that you continue to gauge the barometer of what's going around you, that you continue to read the room. And that means reading, that means listening, that means understanding, that means understanding and acknowledging that most of, of leading comes down to sciences that we are not, not we, not all of us, but many of us are not willing to study, right? We study the sciences that are pertinent to the skills required in our craft, engineering, law, you know, sports training, kinesiology, math if you're a teacher, English if you're a teacher, but we fail to understand how important the ancillary sciences are. In particular, and specifically, we forget to understand or learn that psychology is so important to being a good leader. Understanding how you think, understanding how those you lead think, understanding what impacts how they think, and understanding the impact of how they think has on their ability to do what you are asking them to do. We don't we don't take we don't take that part as serious as we should. So we don't study psychology. We don't we don't try to figure out what's wrong with my approach. We don't try to figure out, you know, really what's going on in this person's head or this or this person's psyche. We don't do that enough. And then sociology. Right? We don't spend enough time trying to dive into what that person that we're trying to lead has to deal with in their circle of influence, right? Their environments that they bring to the table at work, at school, when you're trying to lead them. So step one is if you want to be an effective leader, you have to really want to be good at all of that stuff, at the psychology, at your approach, at what you do, at how you do things. That's number one. Number two, you have to understand the connective tissue with every part of what's going on between what you're trying to teach and what you want them to learn, right? And by that, I mean, what other people, what other situations, what other circumstances are impacting this person? And what other situations, what other people are impacting you, right? So not only do you have to understand, okay, I'm trying to teach this person math or science or how to play football or basketball better, but what is the impact of this person or this idea or this thought having on this person? And what impact are these things in my life having on my ability to teach this person? Right? Am I angry at my wife or my husband or my children, which is impacting my ability to lead today? Today, Is this person impacted by their girlfriend or boyfriend or other teachers? Or the fact that they lost a basketball game or are doing poorly in another test or their parents are laid off 
right? How are all these other things impacting what they're doing? And when you understand that, you approach today's situation, this scenario differently, right? So number one, again, three pieces. Number one is you have to want to be great at all of it. I wanna be great at all of it. Do I screw up? Yes, but I wanna get into people. I wanna dive into, I wanna understand psychology. I wanna understand humor. I wanna understand when to raise my voice, when to dive in and be aggressive, when to back off. I want to understand all of that. I want to be good at all of that. All of it. So that makes me, or that gives me a chance at being a great leader because I want to do all the things that will make me a great leader in whatever I'm doing. Right? Number one. Number two is I try to look around and gauge and understand and listen and ask and think about all the other things and people and circumstances and situations that might be impacting both who I'm trying to lead and me personally. And then I bring that knowledge to bear in as many situations where I'm leading as possible, right? And then number three, the last of the three things I'm gonna talk about today, the last of the three items I wanna give you today. Number three is, you got to be willing to mess up. You got to be vulnerable. You have to connect with your audience in a way that's real and authentic and, and genuine. Now, I do that via story, right? One of the feedback feedbacks I got from speaking to the correctional facility young youth is that my storytelling was so, was so involved that in some ways I may have lost the students or lost the youth, and they may have not been able to connect what that story had to do with their learning, which is valid, right? But I am willing to keep trying ways to connect and be vulnerable and be genuine. To me, the most important step I must take as a leader is to make sure that who I'm trying to lead understands that my intentions are of love, that my desire is to make them the best version of themselves in every way that I can. And that my desire in the moment is to give them something that I know, that I have, that I believe in my heart of hearts they can benefit from. And the way I do that changes. The way I do that will involve, and I teach this, will involve my own unique set of gifts, my own unique set of skills. Right, so whatever you're good at, whatever you are naturally inclined to be great at, we must use those things. But more importantly, we must connect and be genuine and be vulnerable and be real and be willing to mess up and then reset it, right? So I told the youth yesterday that I am willing for you guys to roll your eyes at me I am willing for you guys to shake your head at me when I get mad or I dive into you or I get into you a little bit. I'm willing to deal with all of that because I want, when I leave here, for you to remember Coach Bobby. I want for you to remember this moment. I want you to get something out of what I'm teaching you today that you can use for the rest of your life. And to do that, I must be me. I must be fully engaged. I must be fully involved. I must show you how much I love you and how much I'm willing to dive into all of my past, all of my future, all of my mess ups, all of my failures, all of my dreams in order for you to understand that you have the, that you have the ability to dream, that you have the freedom to mess up. But we can't do that if we're not vulnerable. We can't do that if we're not genuine in our approach. We can't hold back. We can't hold back. We have to be us, right? The same way you would do with your children, hopefully, is showing them, look, I love you to death. I love you enough to make mistakes. I love you enough to be fully involved, fully invested in you growing. I'm going to yell sometimes when I shouldn't. I'm gonna ignore you sometimes when I shouldn't. 
I'm going to hold back on a story that makes me vulnerable sometimes when I shouldn't. But I'm going to come back and acknowledge that to myself first and then to you and then do better and then grow. All right. So that's my that's my leadership lessons from these last two talks that I continue and I will continue to teach and and preach to those who are trying to lead again, not from the standpoint of me knowing all the answers, not from the standpoint of me being the expert, but me presenting ideas and thoughts in a new way for leaders, right? To give them some skills and tools that they can use. So number one, you got to want to be great at all of it, right? Being a great leader is not just being good at the task you're teaching, Right? Being a great football player does not make you a good coach necessarily. Right, Being a genius at math and understanding all the math principles does not make you a great teacher at math automatically. Right, Getting a degree, a, a, a master's or PhD in education does not necessarily make you an effective administrator. The first step is you have to want to, un, want to be great at all of it at the psychology, the sociology, all of it that involves relationships, right? At the end of the day, leading is about relationships. So again, not from a standpoint of me knowing it all, I screw up every single day, right? But I want to be better. I want to be great at all of it. Number two, I understand that every every single interaction comes 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 with it a web a web of interactions on both ends. On their end, those you lead, on your end as a leader. So understand and be cognizant and mindful that, that it's not just this moment or this interaction that's impacting your ability to lead this group or this person. It's many factors. And be open to seeing those and open to understanding those and being empathetic and being understanding and being forgiving of both you and them in the moment. And then lastly, use all your tools, use all your experiences and be genuinely vulnerable to opening up and sharing what you know about life's journey and all that came with it and bring that to the table to allow you to be a more, more effective teacher, administrator, coach, and parent. All right, so I got, I got, I got one more coming up in a couple of weeks for January. So if you, if you find any of this enlightening, if you find any of this helpful and you want me to come and speak to your group, um, your, your class, your school, your faculty, um, your, co your team, um, then let me know, guys. I, I love sharing what I know about life. I love sharing what I know about chasing greatness. And I love sharing um, what I know about leadership. So reach out, guys, if you, if you, if you want any of this, this information or find any of it useful. All right? I'm going to go work out now. Have a wonderful day. I will talk to you all soon. Love you. Bye-bye.